got a wrong number here. Anybody want it? <laughs> it's no good talking to me, love. I'm stone deaf. <laughs> I just been into town, and everyone there's got all these fancy inside toilets. So what I reckon was, we should have one. So I went down, and I blew up our outside toilet. I wish you hadn't done that, Zeke. Why not? Because your ma I was still in there. <laughs> Sorry, that's it. Time up. Oh, not already, Dr. Profile. I've only been here three hours. Oh, by the way, how's your toe? <laughs> oh, much better. One look at your soft, wavy hair, twinkling blue eyes and that firm, jutting chin, and the pain simply disappeared. Yes, I do have that effect. <laughs> Until next week, darling. Bye. Next, please. Uh, one at a time, please. I don't do block bookings. <laughs> me. I've got this weight problem, you see. Get away. <laughs> and I've heard about your alternative medicine, so I thought I'd come along and let you examine me. But it could take months. Do you want me to get on the couch? Oh, Lord, no. It's, it's, it's only steel. <laughs> Shall I get undressed, then? Please yourself, but I'm going home. Hang <laughs> on. What about your bedside manner that I've heard so much about? Ah, uh, you see, that's my home. Bedside manner. It's, uh, in the Cotswolds. <laughs> You can say that again, nobody can. Look, look at my legs. Uh, that reminds me, I must get my snooker table fixed. <laughs> so are you saying that your alternative medicine can't help me? Well, it might help you, but it'd probably kill me. <laughs> Why don't you try one of my special diets? What, you mean like the F plan? Yes, only this is the G plan. You see, instead of eating food, you nibble at bits of furniture. Um, coffee table, chair, that sort of thing. Oh, I don't think I fancy that. Are you sure you couldn't put your arms round my waist? I couldn't put them round your leg, dear. <laughs> Have you ever thought of surgery? I? Yes, we simply make an incision, take away all the subcutaneous tissue, then thanks to the aids of microsurgery, we sort of put you back together without any trace of a scar. It worked on my soft wavy hair, twinkling blue eyes and firm doesn't you? <laughs> Sounds just the job. Yes, and it's only £4,000. But I'm here on the National Health. Ah, well, in that case, Here's a bucket and spade. Do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad night for me last night down at Dogs. Yeah, it's a pity you lost all your money on that dog, wasn't it? Yeah. He wouldn't go round the bend, would he? Kept going straight on all the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mind you, I know how to fix that. Do you? Yeah. yeah, what it needs is a little bit of lead in his left ear, you see. Then he'll take the bends, wouldn't it? You know? That's a good idea. But how'd you put the lead in his ear? With a gun. <laughs> at last, at last, my experiment. <laughs> I've changed. I wonder what I look like. I must look in the mirror. Oh. <laughs> My God, I've grown boobs! Here's your supper, Dr. Jekyll. Don't look at my face. Why? I never look at yours. <laughs> no, 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 eat. Just get out. Leave me alone. But you must. You've been locked in your laboratory from Monday to Saturday. Nobody knew I was there. <laughs> get out. Leave me alone. But you must have something. After all, you are to be married to Miss Traverne the lovely daughter of our local vicar, in only two days from now. Look, just leave me alone and get out. Ah! It's vital and crucial. No, it's corned beef and cabbage. <laughs> What's the matter with your hands? Nothing. It's exactly the same as this one. Ah! Oh. Oh. I'm going on a long journey. I'm going to meet a tall, dark, very hairy stranger. Echo, <laughs> where are you? It is I, Dr. Lanyon, your trusted friend and fellow physician. You're wanted down at the hospital immediately. They've brought in a man with a very rare tropical disease. What is it? Frostbite. <laughs> what are you doing down there? 
Oh, I'm in the middle of... Oh, ah, yes, oh, well, uh, oh. three's a crowd and all that. I'll, I'll come back another day. Oh, at last. I'm free. Free, free. That makes nine. <laughs> Hyde! Who are you? Edward Hyde. Where's Dr. Jekyll? Don't you remember at medical school when he formulated his alter ego theory? You mean his hypothesis that Homo sapien is intrinsically schizophrenic, combining within the single persona the duality of the malevolent and the benign? Oh, would it that simple? <laughs> Look closer, don't you recognize me? You're not David Bellamy, are you? <laughs> Do you recognize this voice? <laughs> Hello, Lanyon. Henry! But how? Yes, you thought you were coming here tonight to see your old friend Henry Lamb. <laughs> no, you are in fact coming here to be murdered by Edward Hyde. <laughs> I'm too old to die. There's no use pleading. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Kill you, you hear? And after I've killed you, <laughs> I'm going to kill that orchestra. <laughs> It is I, your beautiful fiance. Oh, 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 oh. Are you all right? A moment, my dear. I'll let you in. Well, well oh, oh, oh. oh, not till we're married, Henry. <laughs> Come in, my dear. I don't want to disturb you, Henry. You told me you were on the verge of the greatest scientific discovery. I want to show you something. I told you not until we're married. <laughs> Quite right, Henry. What did you see? Why? I'm bordering on the extreme. I'm going where no man has gone before. Until we're married. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show you something. Look. You see before you your fiancé, one man. But in a moment, the other. I told you, Henry. I know. Not, Not until, until we're, we're married. married. <laughs> Open this door or I shall have to break it down before you... Someone's at the door. Jack! Robinson. <laughs> Even old Sergeant Throb, plain clothes. But you're in uniform. It's my day off, ma'am. <laughs> However, this gentleman here has informed me that there's something <laughs> suspicious going on round here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I must warn you, sir, that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence against you. <laughs> uh, How do you spell that, sir? <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, don't do it again, sir. Wait, this is not my Henry. Yes, it is. Jekyll and Hyde. Murders while you wait. Ah! Pigeon loft out. That light bulb's gone. You better put a new one in. Right, oh. Here. Stand on this newspaper. Oh, you're all right. I can reach. <laughs> morning. Morning. What's in the sack? Fish. Did you catch them on your own? No, some worms helped me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I can guess how many fish are in that sack, will you give me one of them? If you can guess how many fish are in this sack, they can have them both. <laughs> Peter? Oh, yes, sir. What you want? This wine tastes terrible. I'm not surprised, sir. That's the soy sauce. <laughs> Our starts. We snack up loads of orange cones upon our council carts. We cruise along the highways until our work is done. We're motorway magicians turning three lanes into one. There's movement on the M6, traffic's fast instead of slow. So Harry had a good idea, bang in a concha flow. We talk about our tailbacks and Murphy slowly smiles. Remembering the one we caused that stretch for 40 miles. We're the boys, we're the boys, we're the boys, we're the boys. We cannot stand the 
sound of traffic noise. So we slow it down or stop it, keep it standing still for days. We're a gang of cash road men with our funny mocha ways. The public have a strange idea that we're not being fair by shutting down the carriageways to do a swift repair. But we've a little secret that we're dying to let out. We never mend the motorways, just move the cones about. <laughs> you always find the roadworks, but you'll never find us near. As soon as traffic's chock a block, we nip off for a beer. And as for all the JCBs and diggers neatly parked, we never ever use them, cause we don't know how they start. We're the boys, we're the boys, we're the boys. Cannot stand the sound of traffic noise. So we slow it down or stop it, keep it standing still for days. We're a gang of cops and road men with our money both the ways. We like to work bank holidays, the cars jammed in one line. The drivers get frustrated while we get double time. <laughs> but late at night it fins out. Oh, it's been a lovely day. So it's good night, everybody. Time to put the cones away. <laughs> We're the boys. We're the boys. We're the boys. We're the boys. We cannot stand the sound of traffic noise. So we slow it down or stop it. Keep it standing still for days. We're again. And in the slow lane, Ernie is wearing a T-junction shirt with the new hard shoulder. For Arnold, it's pullover and jeans with bags of room for a long tail back in the underpass. And finally, there's Reg with his sexy Watford gap and that fly over to the left. Ladies and gentlemen, motorway man. I tell you, Knuckles. This plan is foolproof. It'll be like taking candy from a baby. If ever a bank was saying, come and rob me, it's this one. Right, where's Fingers? Uh, Fingers can't make it. He's sending another driver. Oh, my God. I hope it isn't crushing McGurk. Why? Don't you remember that time I told him to fix the Malone mob? Oh, yeah, you told him to bury them on the new flyover, yeah. That's right. I says to him, I says, use one villain to eight parts cement. <laughs> yeah. What did he do? Yeah, he used eight villains to one part cement. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was bums and arms sticking up all over the place. <laughs> now it's the only flyover on the M1 that gives its own end signals. <laughs> so don't worry, Scarface. Figures assured me he's gonna send an ace wheel man. Right. Mm, baby, you can drive off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe this. Who are you? Geronimo. Toes sent me. Toes? Uh, fingers, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he said you wanted a driver. Are you a wheel man? Of course I'm wheel. <laughs> so you reckon you can handle our motor, do you? I'll give it a bash, yeah. Right, well, I'm Scarface and this is Knuckles. Ah, oh, pleased to meet you. Tell yeah. me something. Have you ever done a big job before? That's a bit personal, isn't it? <laughs> I mean a bank job. Oh, sorry, Chuckles. Knuckles. Oh, sorry, Artface. Scarface. <laughs> Look, we're going to rob a bank, right? Rob a bank? You can't do that. It's criminal. We are criminals, idiot. Yeah? What do you want me to do then, Chuckles? Cockles. Knuckles. <laughs> Look, you're wasting time. Right, we pull up outside the bank. Now, what do you do? Park the motor in the multi-story. You park the motor... Yeah, you'll be stupid. That's miles away. Tell him, Knuckles. You go and find a parking meter. You go and find a parking meter, you Burke. You sit outside the bank with the engine running. Can't I sit in the car? It'll be warmer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can listen to the radio. You'll be with me in the bank, you Burke. Right. We do the business. Rob the bank, leg it out of the bank, jump in the back of the car and make off. Simple, innit? Yeah, one thing, Scargill. What's that? Scarface! <laughs> one thing. What? When are we doing this? Ten o'clock tomorrow morning. I can't make ten o'clock. Why not? I've got a driving lesson. <laughs> this is an expensive.
fancy French restaurant you brought me to. Only the best for you, darling. Mm. I remember a bit of French from school. Mm. La fenêtre of the window, mm. la porte the door, and even Ooh, la fly in my soup. <laughs> no, no, darling. In French, all words are either male or female. Now, that's le fly. It's male. Haven't you got good eyesight? Here you go. Here's a penny for a pint. Here's tuppence. Get me one. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, pint of bitter, please, and a scotch for the dog. <laughs> I'm not serving a dog with a drink. Come on, get out. I want a pint of bitter and a scotch for the dog. I don't care what you say. I'm not serving a dog with a drink. Now, we just get out and take that ridiculous-looking animal with you. Look, mate, you come this side of the barn, I'll thump you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And that goes here, cat as well. <laughs> It pays to be one step ahead. <laughs> Hello, are you Dr. Heinz von Meekball? Yeah, that is correct. Head shrunk, value weight. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Take a seat. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> How long have you had this inferiority complex? I haven't got an inferiority complex. If I had a nose like that, I'd have an inferiority complex. <laughs> well, I'm a shrink. Well, how long have you been a shrink? Ever since that very cold winter of 1953. <laughs> now, what's your problem? I want to give up smoking. Do what I did. Cut down. I only smoke one cigarette after meals. Does it work for you? Oh, yeah. I'm down to 70 meals a day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go right back. Right. Now, have you ever thought you were a dog? No. Good. Then lie on the couch. Right. <laughs> I want you to imagine you are a giraffe. A giraffe? Yes! You're a giant green giraffe, and you live in the wardrobe at the bottom of Russell Harty's garden. I'm a giant green giraffe, and I live in the wardrobe at the bottom of Russell Harty's garden. Oh, now. How long have you had these delusions? I haven't got any delusions. <laughs> Look, the only thing that's wrong with me is that I smoke too much, and I want to give up, OK? All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Let's begin with the hypnotherapy. Good. <laughs> did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. Excellent. Neither did I. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just trying to form a rapport. It's essential that my customers and I have something in common. You're raving mad! Excellent! <laughs> ah, you're feeling sleepy. Very sleepy. Sleepy, very sleepy. You are feeling sleepy, aren't you? I'm not feeling sleepy at all. Well, I am. Move over. <laughs> get off! I used to be a boxer. You used to be a dog. Then get off my couch. How long have you hated your father? I don't hate my father. My father's dead. What did he do before he died? He went... <laughs> <laughs> my God! What a hair-raising experience. <laughs> you need calming down. I find music is very soothing, do you? Yes. Good, good. You know, for years I studied the pianos, and I said, yeah, that is a piano. <laughs> this is all very interesting, but I just want to give up smoking. It's bad for me. It's smoking so bad for you, how come it cured this kipper? <laughs> I shall give you a prescription. Take it to the pharmacist or the chemist, whichever's the nearest. <laughs> Take 120 a day. Just a second, this is a prescription for cigarettes. I don't smoke 120 a day. How many do you smoke? 60. Oh, good, good, good. You see, already, already we've reduced your problem. Come back and see me same time next year. Uh, next. Uh, ah, Lord Rawlings. <laughs> this operation was a great success. <laughs> Cigar? Get on the couch, I shall be with you in a moment. <laughs> Must, must get my head together. Must get my head together. Oh, I'll use yours. <laughs> Say, partner, one of your bees has just stung me. Now, what are you going to do about it? Well, mister, you show me which one it was, and I'll knock the living daylight out. <laughs> Silence and court. Everyone on the feet, please. For that merry man about law, beak of the week, let's have a big, warm, old belly welcome for Jolly Justice Evans! Woo! Roses are red, violets are blue, and we got a wonderful court case for you. <laughs> Poetic justice, good. What's a jury like? Uh, six men and six women, my lud. Where's the other six? Still in bed? <laughs> Let's hear the charge. <laughs> J 
Jolly good. Now, let's hear the retreat. We're <laughs> wasting time, my lad. We have a case to try. Good. I'll crack the first bottle. But it's murder. Oh, it's all right. I'll drink anything. I'm dying of thirst. <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> Can I have a chair? Hip, hip. Hooray! <laughs> continue. I should like to call the accused Mrs. Yvette Gridley. Why? Because that's her name, my lad. <laughs> call Samantha Fox. Call Samantha Fox. Call Samantha Fox. My lad. Well, it was worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm determined to have this court heard behind closed doors. Why? Because I hate drafts. Continue. <laughs> call Yvette Gridley. Call Yvette Gridley. Call Yvette Gridley. my dear. <laughs> now, before we find you not guilty, <laughs> allow me to introduce you to Mr. Frobisher. Hmm. And in the red corner, the masked mauler of the old Bailey. I haven't got a mask. Well, do us all a favour and slip this off. Will you? I mean well. I'm sure you mean well. <laughs> Mrs. Gridley. What were you doing on the night of January the 14th? I stood at home. Hello. And what were you doing on the night of January the 25th? I stood at home. Hello. May I ask a question? Yes, my lord. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> my lord, I object. Why? I asked her first. Very <laughs> well. Would you like to get off? May we? We oh, certainly may. <laughs> this is outrageous. You killed your husband, and by the time I'm finished with you, you'll be in Wormwood Scrop. But that's a man's prison. You meant your own business. <laughs> nice one. La France, six points. <laughs> My lad, I appeal to you. He appeals to me more than you do. <laughs> Thank you, my lad. Uh, Mrs. Gridley, or may I call you a vet? Why, she got foot and mouth. <laughs> Silence in court. I know there was. It usually goes better than that. Now, let me get the facts straight. You maintain that on the night that your husband was shot, you saw a man running away from the house. Uh, seven feet tall, one leg, blonde hair, black eyebrows, and a red beard. Oh, come on. That could be anybody. <laughs> Don't you agree? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And now I'll drink in a glass of water. Oh. <laughs> I put it to you that there was no mysterious stranger. You killed your husband, and you can't get away with murder. Well, doing all right so far. Right, right, right. Millard, I should like to call a surprise witness. A surprise witness? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Gordon Bennett, the knights are joining. <laughs> Any messages? Uh, Mrs. Gridley, would you mind telling the court, in my own words, exactly <laughs> what you were doing the time that your husband was shot? I took my chihuahua for a walk. Indeed. Uh, when was this? Just after I killed my husband. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Oh! Oh, you beautiful doll! <laughs> well, this woman's clearly innocent. You can leave the court, my dear. But my lud, she's just confessed to murder. She's obviously a dangerous homicidal maniac. Oh, it's nonsense. She's as sane as I am. <laughs> Shall I clear the court, my lord? That's a hell of a joke for a lad your age. Finish <laughs> <laughs> justice triumphs again. <laughs> We are loyal bin men, your garbage we collect. Though so as we are bin men, that's what you might expect. But have you ever wondered, as we practice our art, exactly what is in this lot? We're loaded on the cart. A pair of left hand mittens, a single hard boiled egg. You'd be surprised what people throw away. A pair of nylon.
on tights that's got a handy extra leg. <laughs> You'd be surprised what people throw away. A nearly life-size portrait of the monarch of the Glen. Something the cat brought in an eight and then brought up again. <laughs> now I know what happens to each single ballpoint pen. You'd be surprised what people throw away. Now we are loyal bin men and we're not the sort to judge. But you'd be surprised what people throw away. Sometimes when we poke around in someone else's sludge You'd be surprised what people throw away A medal second class awarded by the band of oak A thing for seeing backwards called a new see back rascope <laughs> In this transparent bubble there's a statue of the Pope You'd be surprised what people throw away Rager underwear that's been ripped up for eggs. You'd be surprised what people throw away. And little bits of furry food in sticky plastic bags. You'd be surprised what people throw away. Eight meters of elastic and a loaf of garlic bread. A tiny little budgie that is very, very dead. <laughs> and if we're lucky, there's a pound or two of lovely lead. Oh, you'd be surprised what people throw away. The dustbin is the ideal place for things that you wanted. You'd be surprised what people throw away. At times it takes a bit of nerve to lift the dustbin lid. You'd be surprised what people give away. A pork pie with to sell by date of May 382. A pair of white pants with the gap stuck up with super glue. A sort of pot of khaki, mucky, tucky, yucky goo. We're not surprised what people throw away. A pair of really ancient spats. Some bilious pills for bilious cats. A toilet roll dispensing set. An avocado vinaigrette. A rather kinky plastic mac. A takeaway king prawn and sack. A very naughty magazine. Some cheese that's gone up perfect green. You'd be surprised what people throw away. You'd be surprised.